Apostle, Reverend Ebenezer. Let's stand and welcome him. Come on, church. Lift up your hands. Come and lift up your hands. Lift up your two hands to God. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you praise. We glorify and we magnify your name you are the ancient of day you are the beginning and the end you know the end before 
Bible. Let's open to the book of Acts chapter 10, verse 28. We can all stand up to read the word of the Lord. If you have your Bible, we're going to read collectively, we're going to read together. Acts chapter 10, verse 34. Can we all read one to go? We have it on the screen. I want you to read it with confidence and with power and with enthusiasm. Can we all go one to go? Now we're going to read it together on the screen. Amen? I want you to read with power, with confidence, and with enthusiasm. One, two, go. That is not the scripture. Acts chapter 38. Acts 10, 38. Amen. Acts 10, 38. Correct. Now, okay, let's go. Okay. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm excited now. Tell your neighbor, get ready for something. Okay, we're going to read it again one more time. With power, loud, clear, with boldness. One, two, go. How God has anointed Jesus of Nazareth with Holy Ghost and with power. Doing good and healing all were oppressed of the devil for the Lord was with him. You can have your seat in the presence of the Lord. Going to church with that power is empty. You have read the Bible, but you have not encountered the power of God. The Bible said the letter kill it. But the word give life. There is so many church that you go, they read the Bible, they know the Bible, they do good Bible study, but no power. He said, and he went about Saving those who are oppressed by the devil. So you mean there is some power if you're not careful they're going to mess up with your life. Mess up with your children. Mess up with your finances. But you need a power church to encounter the manifestation of God. Because sometimes what we do you don't understand. It takes the heart of the spirit to understand the things of the spirit. I want to tell you this morning, you are not here by mistake. God brought you here for a great assignment to change your garments, to change your name, Amen. to change your location. Amen. You need to connect to power. Tell your neighbor you need to connect to power. You need to connect to power. You can have a iPhone 7 or iPhone 10. It's just an ordinary phone. If you don't have a Wi-Fi or you don't have a network. And if you have a Wi-Fi and you don't have a network, it's still empty. You got to connect to something that will make that phone serve you. The phone is very expensive, 
but it's going to be an empty phone if you're not connected to something that will make the phone to work. And then sometimes when you want to lose that phone, you got to download some things into your phone. If you don't download those things some, you got to pay for them for you to have an access to use it. I want to tell you something this morning. You are not in an ordinary room. You are not in an ordinary house. You are here in the house that is filled with power. God wants to break you loose from every power that have tormented you from your mother's womb. God wants to change things, change your name, change your address. Now listen to me. Listen to me. The power of God is here. To set the captives free and to heal all that is oppressed of the devil. What you need is a power church. And the devil will try everything for you not to connect to a power church. If you are not careful, he's going to take you out. That's why you need to root yourself. Tell your neighbor you got to root yourself. To a power church. John chapter 14 verse 26. John chapter 14 verse 26. No, before John chapter 14, 26, let's look at John 14, 12. Let's look at John 14, 12. He said, very, very, I said to you, you have seen me raise the dead. You see me walk upon the water. You see me, the man at the pool of Bethsaida for 38 years. The woman with the issue of blood just took the hem of my garment. And you know the people that put into practice? Acts chapter 3. Peter and John were going to the beautiful gate. They met that man. They said, silver and gold I have not. What I have I give to you in the name of Jesus. Rise and walk. He said, and this great power walk you shall do. You have not seen anything yet. That's what I'm talking about. Power to double anointing. Power, power. In, in Hebrew is dynamis, dynamite, power, power, power. He said, this greater work than this, you will do. Now when you read further, he said, I am with you. I am with you. But I am going to my father. And I will send you the Holy Spirit. Now listen, listen to this. I am with you. I am with you. I'm going to my Father. I will send you the Holy Spirit. Now this Spirit will live in you. And show you great and mighty things. Before I am walking with you, now you carry me inside of you. Uh, before I tell you what to do, but now you have me in your mind, in your heart. So whatever you declare on earth is declared in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth is loose in heaven. And therefore I say to you in the name of Jesus, no any entanglement of the devil yeah. that have tormented your life and your mind. You are under a new oil, a new era of the supernatural and the manifestation of the almighty God. I prophesy to you, you are coming out. Amen. You are coming out Amen. of everything.
every depression. Yes. You are coming out coming of out. every oppression. Yes. You are coming out coming of out. every satanic power. Coming you are coming out. out. Coming you are coming out. out. Coming you are coming out. out. Coming out. Jesus. Listen to this. Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 3. Jeremiah 33 verse 3. You know, I, I love this version. I love King James so well. But you know, King James have a very strong English. And uh, you need to explain the scripture sometimes. You know, so people can understand in a different dimension what God is saying. And I use different versions to be able to break it down so when I'm talking to my little boy of two years old, he can get what dad is saying. Because if I'm speaking Kim James grammar to my son, it's going to die. I don't know what you're saying. Can you come again? So I try to break down the scripture in such a way that we broaden my understanding that I will understand the gravity of the power and the manifestation of God in that scripture for that season. So I decided to look for easy to read. And in Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3, in easy to read version say, Judah, he said, Ebenezer, I say, Esther, he called you by your name, James, uh, David, Judah. Uh, I want to say something to you. If you pray to me, I will answer you and I will tell you important secret. Come on now. If you pray to me, I will uh, tell you important secret that nobody has ever had before. And I underline that word, important secret. So before I write the exam, God is going to tell me the answer because it's important secret. Before I go for a job interview, God is going to tell me what you're going to ask me Amen. because it's an important secret. But in a place of prayer, let me tell you something. A, 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 a pastor in Canada cannot speak French. And for you to become a Canadian citizen, you got to learn how to speak French. So you, the Lord was praying, the Lord said to him, when you get there, I will tell you what to do. So when he got there, they asked him all the question, just about them asking him to speak French, he started coughing. <laughs> They call 911 and they take him to the hospital. By the time he wake up in the hospital, they say, you have become a Canadian citizen. He doesn't have to speak French. That is what I'm talking about when you come to God. He will give you the mystery to eating treasure. When you come to God, he will open you up to the supernatural. When you come to God, he will open you up to abundant when you come to God it's going to change something about your life I'm speaking to you this morning under this grace under this auction God is about to do something yes. now something happened that amazed my mind the book of Acts Apostle Acts chapter 15 up to, up to chapter 5, sorry, up to chapter 5, verse 15 to 16. The Bible says, oh my, hallelujah, I can feel the presence of the Lord in this place so mightily, hallelujah, glory. You say, the, Bi the Bible says, oh, glory, the Bible says that they bring the blind, the lame from various villages and they are waiting for the shadow of Peter to heal them. They are not waiting for Peter to lay hand on them. And the new rara in this church, Mama don't have to lay hand on you. Oh, Ramashon de Reba le Kareba Marada. Rebe bere tosu klebralu lerus kataya. He said the shadow. They are waiting for the shadow of Peter to heal them. And the Bible say, oh, that they are healed. And they repeat it, are oppressed by the devil. You got 
will understand that word. He said, all oh, that they are oppressed by the devil. They are all here. And some of you don't know that what is tormenting you has tormented your father before. What is tormenting you has tormented your mother before. The battle you are fighting right now, your father fight a little bit. The remainder is waiting for you. I say something this morning. Moses, he conquered Red Sea. The Bible say, Moses, I want you to use the rod. When you get at the front of the Red Sea, use the rod and stretch it forth. As he stretched it forth, the Bible say, the rest said departed into two. In Joshua chapter 1, when it come to the time of Joshua, the Bible say Joshua also encountered water. But in this time around, is a river. His father fought the battle of sea. But he fight the battle of river. Now the battle is reducing. And you got to fight the battle in another dimension. You can't fight the battle the way your father fought the battle. So the Lord said to Joshua, you got to step into the river. There is some battle you got to step into it. There's some battle you got to ask prophesy to you this morning in the name of Jesus. Amen. No power of the enemy can hold you Amen. captive again. You are coming out. Coming out. I was preaching this morning. I didn't mention this. A lady spoke to me last week Sunday. She's from Massachusetts. She said, I've been to church for 20 years. And I have not seen the demonstration of power. I have read the Bible. But no demonstration of power. But then when I heard you speaking, I see the demonstration of power. Because you know why the missionary came to us in Africa? They don't know anything about voodoo. They don't have a clue about habilis. They don't have a clue about sacrificed chicken and bull. They don't have a clue about burning candle, red candle, yellow candle, brown candle. They don't have a clue about it. But when I come to Jesus and I say what Jesus can do for me, harabatele, I understand the mystery of power. Come on. I understand the mystery of power. I understand the mystery of power. And that is why God has sent apostles to the United States of America. The devil is tormenting our children in America. The devil is bringing demonic spirit to bring down our children. But right now, we have come with a demonstration of power to set them loose from every depression, every oppression of the enemy. On Easter Sunday, I preach. And when I finished preaching, five people give their life to Jesus. And they told me, Pastor, we want to be baptized today. And I say, it's very cold in Massachusetts. It's cold. It's 35 degrees. He said, no, we got to be baptized today. They said, today. I don't know if the Holy Ghost speaking through them. So I went home. When I get home, I dress and I put my anointing oil in my pocket. And we went to the, we have a sea close to our house, close to the church. Just about a five minute drive. And we walk on the sand. As we are walking on the sand, can you put on the picture? As we are walking on the sand, I saw a black bag sealed. A black bag on the sand before the ocean. A black bag sealed. And something tell me, pick up the bag. You know, God only use a dummy. 
Whatever he asks you to do, do it. So I just pick up the bag. And I say, Lord, this bag is sealed. He said, look for a stone, a sharp stone, and cut off the bag. And I say, yes, Lord. I say, yes, Lord. I say, yes, to your will. I say, yes. Where you leave me, I will go. find eight black candle with eight black rope and I remove my hoyer. Now I say why the Lord said put your hoyer in your pocket. And I say every power that I've tied this person I don't know who you are but God has sent me on a resurrection Sunday to this shore of the sea. Now listen to me. Listen to me. When you throw an object into a sea, it sink. But this one, it flows. And God push it to the side. And God send a man of God to go and set that person. I will set the captives free. Now, wait. I, when I was praying, I said, God, what is this? And God began to make things clear for me. And God said to me, son... Uh, probably that person is in Africa and he has been to a voodoo priest and the voodoo priest says son I can't help you because somebody has burned eight candles and I put it in the bag and he has thrown it in the sea the day they found the bag that day you will receive your freedom and the person said how can I find the bag <laughs> that has been thrown into the sea and it turned to Jesus and he began to pray the way mama tell you to pray sometimes and you laugh he tell you run, lose, lose, lose and some of you say what are you telling us to do and this person probably he went to church and the pastor said now is the time to lose you from every oppression of the devil the time for you to be loose from every satanic power. The time for you to be loose from everything that I've tied your ancestor. The time for you to be loose from everything. Be why I make myself available for the Lord. And even when I refuse to go, God decided to tell some people, Pastor, you gotta go. And I go there. God used me as a vessel. What am I trying to tell you today? When apostles say pray and fast, there is something God is showing you in the spirit that you can see with your ordinary eye. It takes the height of the spirit, it takes mind of the spirit for me to take a bag in a black bag. What happens if it's a diaper? I don't care if it's a diaper because I'm a dummy for the Lord. I pick it all away and I open it up I'm telling you this morning, everyone that I write your name somewhere and cage you somewhere, Jesus. anyone that I've spoken against you, that you will not move forward. Anyone that I've hung your name somewhere. I want you to see down, let me say this to you. You got to say power. Say power. Power. Come on, say power. Power. Shout to say power. Power. When, about 15 years ago, a woman got married. And the mother-in-law was so angry because they didn't put some beef on the rice. Just a beef. You give me a rice, but no beef on your wedding day. Who do you think you are? I'm going to show you, and I will tell you that I'm stronger than you. It's your daughter-in-law. He got married to your son. He wrote the name in capital letter, in upper letter. The name of the son, 
and the name of the woman just because of a beef. And tied in a black rope and went to an ocean and said, as I throw this name on an ocean, they will never have a child. One year, no child. Two year, no child. Three year, no child. They traveled down to the United States. And they came to a fire church like this. They came to a church like this. When the pastor said, pray. Everyone that have taken your baby. Everyone that have taken what belongs to you. Everyone that have tied you in any rope. They serve to leave you. The pastor tell them to pray. They fast. They keep coming. One year, two years. One day, they went to the fish market. You know the fish market? If you know where they put the live fish. The wife said, I want to eat fish today. So the wife point on that fish. This one, give it to me. And they take the fish. He said, can we? He said, don't cut it. When I get home, I will cut the fish. Now this happened in Africa. Now they live in the United States. They bought the fish. They get home, clean the fish. They take all the shell out. As soon as she cut the fish, she found the paper. When I tell you this, it's a pastor story, but I just find one too. You don't know what is troubling your mind. They found a paper, a name and the name of a husband. Six months later, they got pregnant. Today, they have three children. I prophesy to your life in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God is locating you. Amen. God is locating you. Amen. Every instruction that Apostle asks you to do now, do it fast. Don't hesitate. Now I'm going to say this again. Some people will discourage you. Because they know where God is taking you. They will try everything for you not to come to church. Why are you going there? Delete them from your Facebook. It, on your phone, say bye bye. I don't need you. Some people, their ministry is to make sure you don't get to the place of dominion. If Joseph's brother could do that to Joseph, who are you? God positioned you here for an assignment. And God has given the woman of God the grace that you need. The Bible says, they that dwell in the secret place of the motion shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. There is some things God is doing that you can't understand. It takes the heart of the spirit to understand it. It takes the mind of the spirit to understand it. I love this place so much because it's a power church. It's enough and enough of reading the Bible and speaking nice and I can't touch power. I want to feel God in a new way. I want to feel God in a new dimension. I want to feel the power of the Holy Ghost. I want to be drunk in the Holy Ghost. Amen. I have been filled up with a crazy thing, but this is the time to be filled up in the Holy Ghost. Amen. So you are not in an ordinary place. This is the time for you to announce your church. Be proud of your church. Tell everybody in the store, in Walmart, in Penny, in the mall, in the taxi, 
on the train in the Uber, you got to come to Alpha and Omega. If you have never seen wonders before, you got to come here. God want to use you like the woman at the well. You know how you have before. Check out yourself and see who you are now. God is not done with you yet. God is not done with you yet. A lot of people left the enemy, carry them out of their blessing. Just about them touching it. When the Bible said, be still and know that I am God. If you go to an exam hall where they're writing a test on an exam, it's silent. If you make noise in an exam hall, they take you out. And everywhere is silent for you right now. And you are hungry. You don't know that you are in an exam hall. God is testing you. And you are hungry. I'm going to round off with this. Naaman is a very strong army in Syria. Very important man. For the house girl, the maid. The maid. Not the personal assistant, the maid. He say, Sir, if you can't go to my village, my town, there is a man of God there. When is the last time you tell somebody about Alpha? He said, there is a man, there is a woman there. A woman of God. But the, the master have tried everything you can ever think of. So he thought it's this morning that give the anointing. He packed everything. And I love the way God operates. God say, when he got to the man of God, the man of God said, I'm not going to see you. You're going to do crazy things. Sometimes when God asks you to do crazy things, he's about to shoot you out for the supernatural of the manifestation of God. Amen. And the Lord say, and the prophet say to this man, go to Jordan, a dirty water. He dipped the first time. Sometimes when you dip the first time in the dirty water, God is doing something that you can see with your ordinary eyes. He dipped the third time, the fourth time. Let me tell you something. I, I love that scripture. The more you deep, the more God shakes some things off you. Amen. The more you fast and pray, it's shaking something of you. The more you pray morning prayer, people call you names. It's shaking off something. The Bible did the seventh time. The skin of a man became as of a baby. That's the power of the Lord. And the Bible make it clear. And this greater work than this, you will do. Tell your neighbor you are in the power charge. Say with confidence you're in the power charge. There's something God is doing to me very deep, very, very deep. We all work very hard in this nation. And they give us the balance of what we work for. They take the car insurance, take the medical insurance, take the retirement plan if you're working for the state or federal government. And they say, sir, this is your balance. And then when the tax return comes, you think they're giving you free money. It's your money that they overtake. They just say, well, we make a mistake by taking 30%. Now tell us. They didn't want to give it to you. You got to tell them. 
for them to release it to you. Rene parapasati yarabashayama. Zureli mati karapasarima. The richest men in America know the mystery of Titan. I am from Massachusetts. Listen, listen. I am from Massachusetts. You got to know this. You got to read the history of America. I'm from Massachusetts. And last week Sunday, I got an opportunity to tour Boston. The founder of Boston is a pastor. He's a reverend from England. In 1748, he came to discover Boston, Massachusetts. They know the mystery of seed and titan. The best university in the whole world is in Massachusetts. Now, the richest street in America is in Boston. Joy Street. You got to go go it. $48 million for a house is in Massachusetts. Joy Street. And we, God, we ask, can you give your tithe and the offering? Somebody have taken 40% that you will not see. And God say, and I will open up the windows of heaven and I will bless you. And you find it difficult to believe. It's a promise of God. Every time God asks you to do something, it's not going to tell you to do something that is convenient for you. If it's convenient, it's normal God. It's going to challenge you. And with all this, you still have the credit card, 30%. You have 29.99. 27.99 and your money is not enough you need God right now you need him what you need is God what you need is God not your effort, not your job you need God to bring something into your finances amen and when we say so seed, some of you are, oh Lord, the house of this. I live here. I walk in the University of Massachusetts. So I know what I am telling you. On Tuesday, I'm going to walk. Tomorrow is a public holiday. So I know what I'm telling you. I'm not just telling you what I don't know. Some of you, you use that credit card. You don't have it, but you still use it in Walmart. And JC Penny and Macy's. Ah. And you don't have it. But you still use it. When God asks you to sow a seed, He wants to breathe into your finances. When God asks you to do something, it's making you to do it to inconvenience you so He can bless you. The house we have in Massachusetts, the house was built by a drug dealer. I'm not a drug dealer, I'm a dealer of Jesus. When we went to look at a place, I don't have the money, but I have oil. What makes the difference is the power. He anointed Jesus Christ with power. And wherever he go, favor follow him. And I have the same power. I said, this greater thing than this, you will do. I bought the oil. They give it to us. What well, we pay for it, when people look at us, they, they say, well, how do you get it? Because we sow seed. We sow seed. I want you to sow a seed of 360 this morning. $360. Now listen to this. I'm going to pray on this seed. And the glory of the Lord is going to come down on your seed. And the seed is going to germinate and bring forth fruit. And what you did not work for, what you did not deserve, the Lord will give it to you. You know, it take me a deeper understanding. I wish somebody has explained this for me a long time ago. One of my credit card, the balance there is too crazy. I have to sow seed with that credit card. And one day the credit card company called me, we're going to give you 5%. Wow. It takes God to do that. Some of your debt will be wiped out. Now, in this season, there is a grace of a supernatural manifestation of God in this house. God wants to bless something. God wants to do what? 
blessed. How many of you, we don't have time. I'm, I want you to come if you want to join me. I'm going to show it. Come and join me by faith. Write that check. Use that credit card. And I'm telling you, I'm going to join my faith with your faith this morning. No power of darkness will stop you again. Everything that has messed with your finances, they don't have a choice but to leave. I want you to step forth by faith. And I'm telling you, in the name of Jesus, in this season, you are coming out. You are coming out. Don't doubt. Believe. I know some people are watching online. You can join us and do the seed as well. Have you seen where they give people houses that they did not build and give them the key? Have you seen where they give people cars? That they did not pay for. And God is asking you. Sow a seed for the supernatural. Of the manifestation of God. You say oh, I can't do it. You are blocking your blessing. God got to use something. To open you up. God got to use something. I wish somebody has told me this. For a long time. I was preaching this morning. The first $20 bill I ever seen in my life is 15 years ago. The first, my first $20 bill, I will never forget. And as soon as they gave me the $20 bill, I went straight to my pastor in Africa. I said, man of God, bless me. I want to sow this seed to the ministry. He take the money, and he blessed me. Look at me now. I found myself in America. I'm spending dollar. Just from $20. God want to do the same for you. Under this anointing this morning. I know somebody is also sitting down. You're still thinking in your mind. Do I do it? Do I not do it? Come on, stand up and do it. Stand up and do it. So the seed for this season. Of power. So in this season. Of power. I'm still waiting for two more people. The Lord said there's too much person. I was in Florida preaching. A lady came out on Sunday. On Monday, she find check of $3,000 waiting for her in her mail. And she said, Pastor, thank you for waiting for me to do it. Do it. Thank you for your obedience. One more person. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. God cannot ask you to do something that he will not honor. He's asking you to do it because he wants to honor you. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray for you. Then I'm going to take the seed and we're going to plant the seed. Amen. Amen. Now I want to tell you something. I have not called myself. Apostle has not called herself. I was talking this morning. Apostle know very clearly some of the things I'm saying. When I was in Africa, somebody said you can't speak good English. Can I speak good English now? Do I sound like an African? It will change your garment and change your language. Somebody don't understand what I'm saying. It will change your garment and do what? Change your language. I was telling Apostle. They told me, my wife told me, not doctor. She's listening, she's watching. She told me, the doctor said, I cannot have a baby. And I said, I will marry you. My parents called a meeting because I'm an African man. We love children. They said, the girl said that, you know, we have a baby, you go still marry her. I said, yes, sir. I have never said no. I'm Yoruba. We respect our parents. You can't say no to them. For the first time in my life, I said, I will marry. I'm in trouble now. 
I told the apostle about eight years ago. He said, son, dance, celebrate. Why are you worried? Today I have two handsome boys, LD boys. Your seed will germinate. And it will give you what money can buy. I'm going to pray for you.
come take it you're going to give it to me I'm doing what the Lord has instructed me to do Zulima and Dusky in Karosh Menteno Kopurone Katanikra no Santa Pahana Yalanti Kurana Apaya Take it in the name of Jesus A fresh oil Credit card, just bring it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. waiting for some people with a credit card if you got the machine uh, just let, let me have the seat you cannot go back to if you drop if you give it to me you can go to your seat we don't have time but there's so many things we're going to do amen have you everybody has given me the seat the people came out yours is coming okay okay Ya baranda bashuka ya da bali barabe se porone ma zem brodosh ke prene le meteze le brodosh apalabe ya barane mozo korea now now if you are here and you say pastor i want to do something but i've looked at everything i want to do something now seed is a different category i want you to know you can't plant a mango tree and you want to reap apple. You got to know what you plant. That's what you reap. Somebody got what I'm saying? Whatever you sow, you will reap. Whatever you sow, you will reap. God bless you. Now, if you want to sow something into this fresh anointing, I want you to come forward. If you want to sow something, if you want to sow something, come forward. You give it to me. I'll lay my hand on you and I'll pray on the seed. In the name of Jesus. Okay? I want you to come. 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 Maraba shote kele mozom brodo shalaba. Yale bodo somale galaba halabra da basan. Ye pre de mozoto lo moshada la mada. This is my worship, all of my worship, I will not be silent. Come on, come on, we don't have a time.
you know what this woman of God is dealing with, with every one of you, you will pray for her and you will love her from the bottom of your heart. As I'm touching some people, I'm seeing some people that you can see. And this woman, I pray. We pray for you every day. And we love you. And you don't know the battle that it's fighting over your life. You don't understand. You don't understand. So people have make a vow that you will not smile. Every day they never sleep. And they don't want you to smile. You don't understand. And she's standing the gap in a position like a soldier. I'm not leaving until I see them smile. Anything that we fight them, I will fight against that thing. You are in the right place. Don't, don't, don't let anybody pollute your mind. The power of the Lord is in this place. The glory of the Lord is in this place. This is a power church. We are not doing church. This is a power. The Bible says he heal all that they are oppressed of the devil. She suck it in. She suck it in and she stays stand. God is losing some people today. This time around, you invite even your enemy to church. Yeah.
Hallelujah. We have sown the seed. We're going to plant the seed. So the seed can germinate and bring forth fruit. Father, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Jesus. 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 Let this seed speak for us. And let this seed bring forth resolve in every dimension of our life. In Jesus' mighty name. Come on, clap your hands for the Lord Jesus. And celebrate Jesus. Now, I'm looking at the time. I'm so sorry, Pastor Remo. Please forgive me. Please. I'm begging you. I have overspent my time. I'm so sorry. Are we not happy? If you are excited, come on, jam your hands for Jesus. Amen. You know, mommy, I love you so much. My little boy always say, we want to go to Houston. They all love you, my wife. We believe in you and the grace of God upon your life. And mommy, in this season, God is taking you to a place of supernatural dimension of power and glory. Anyone that we iron your clothes will fall under the anointing. When you sit down and stand up and somebody sit down there, they will receive miracle. In this season, whatever you say, as you think it, will happen. And anyone that is born of a woman that has spoken any word against you or planning anything against your life, the hand of the end, the hand of the Lord will deal with them. And I will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemy. America is waiting for your voice. And the time has come. The season has come. The moment has come. My daughter, get ready. Because I am taking you to the nations. Come on, celebrate Jesus. I love you. Eight years ago, she prayed for me. She don't even know me. But she prayed for me. And since then, my life has not remained the same. Mommy, I respect you. And I respect the grace of God over your life. The season for you to be celebrated has come. Now, listen to this. When you love something, you announce it. Announce your station, your church. Put it on Instagram. Put it on Facebook. Compel people to come. Amen? This is your home. We love you. We believe in you. God bless you in Jesus' mighty name.